Um, hello and welcome back viewers of AVG News. Mkholi Sinube is my name. Uh, I'm uh, starting this uh, uh, tribute to our fallen legend, uh, continue loving Mshlanga. Most of you would know him as uh, a, a theater, a playwright. He's a, a legendary playwright. He's also a, a producer, was also a producer. He's almost everything in terms of the arts, in especially Matebeleland. Uh, so I'm joined live here by uh, one of the men who worked with him. Uh, you'll introduce himself, but he's an academic based in Cape Town. He had some time in Zimbabwe, especially in Bulawayo, and we, he worked he worked there uh, with Kant, uh, Dr. Christopher John. Doc, how are you? Hello, Polisi. I'm fine. How are you? I am okay. Uh, we meet uh, on the set news of the passing on of a man that I believe is uh, a friend of yours and somebody that you worked with, uh, Mr. Mshlang. Uh, can you briefly tell us how you got to meet with him? Yes, absolutely. F first of all, I'd like to say how sorry I am at his passing to, particularly to his family. And uh, uh, who must be very uh, distressed at this time, and of course to the arts community in Zimbabwe. I, I was born in uh, Zimbabwe and went off to be an actor in the UK, and I came back to Zimbabwe in '86, and that's when I met with Kant. Uh, he was working in Makakoba in Bulawayo, and I lived and worked with him in Makakoba for three years around that time. Uh, at the time, he was working at Traeger's and he ran a karate club uh, that did plays, which was based at Sharka Youth Center next to the bus station in Makakoba. And uh, he, uh, he, he'd, he'd done a play called Nancy Lindoda, which had won the National Theatre Festival, which I had judged. And I chose to work with him. And uh, we had no money. We lived in abject poverty, as it were, and there was slight funding from NORAD, and he enjoyed working with me because I was a, a highly trained Royal Shakespeare British actor, uh, so I had skills that he thought was useful and useful for his group, and he started working on this play called Workshop Negative, which made him very famous and uh, uh, changed all our lives, and uh, uh, what my skills were was uh, I could teach the group how to do contact stunt fighting because I was very good at stage fighting and they were doing karate fighting. So his plays were a mix, were a wonderful mixture of uh, uh, Hong Kong Kung Fu movie storylines with these big fight sequences. And it was very exciting when we could introduce fighting with weapons and the illusion of hitting and smacking each other and uh, political satire. And Workshop Negative was about uh, uh, daytime socialists and nighttime capitalists in Zimbabwe. And at that time, that kind of topic had not been particularly publicized. The Sandura Commission hadn't happened. So it was wonderful political satire, very funny plays from a township uh, perspective. And I think uh, academics and middle-class people didn't believe that this guy who worked at Traeger's could write such good plays or that we as a group, um, TK Tokazani, Marsh and myself could be that skilled. And we played in Shark uh, Center Hall which is where they did karate. And there was a boxing ring at the end of the hall. No lights, no equipment. The plays were done on the boxing ring and uh, people came in and, and watched them. We were hugely popular. And when Kant wrote work, Workshop Negative, he would come with two pages and we'd learn it and act it. And we would rehearse it outside with all these small children sitting around reacting to the play, laughing and the text was this wonderful township English, which was uh, innovative and very witty and, um, and kind of wonderful. So I found the language and it was mixed with Cinderbelly 
very, very inspiring. And he would, we would play a scene and he would watch it and he'd watch the reaction and then go away and write the next bit and the next bit. So none of us knew where it was going. And uh, uh, the little children would tell each other what had happened yesterday so they could make, knit the story together. And uh, he made this wonderful play. The ending of it is difficult and we had various different endings because he wrote it in this process of seeing it develop. He didn't really have an, know how it was going to end. And it, it was about a, a black businessman, uh, a, a white Rhodesian who had fought in the war and uh, a black gorilla who had fought in the war. And, it, and the workshop was the country. And it had these very big fight sequences, uh, about five or six of them. And uh, 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 so the action and the humor was very strong. And that was the play that we did. It changed all our lives. And uh, it was a huge education for me because I was able to work very closely with Kant and he explained a lot and taught a lot. And Kant, <laughs> Kant was quite autocratic and he certainly wouldn't be told what to do by anyone. <laughs> uh, the state, political parties, no one. He was very much his own guy. And, uh, uh, but I was close enough to him for him to explain a lot to me. So it was a wonderful moment in my life of, of growth. And um, he also would uh, uh, sometimes interact with me and take advice and we could discuss ideas. There was plenty that we didn't agree on and plenty that we did agree on. And he, uh, uh, he, and this was the moment that because we, I was working full-time with Amakosi, three of us, Andrew Moyo, Kant and myself, uh, he gave up his job and we became professional artists in the township. And he had never had the courage to do that. And that's where he had the courage to truly commit to becoming an artist. And of course, we know that he, he, he became such a significant artist, but also the middle class didn't believe that somebody could, uh, from the township and Makakoba could write great literature. So they didn't believe at that time that he was writing the plays. Um, and there were all sorts of attacks on it. Nobody could have written those plays from those perspectives except him. And uh, the play got into a lot of political controversy and uh, that also educated us and changed our lives. I think we were quite innocent in a way at that time. I don't think we imagined the political storm we were going to get caught in, but it made Kant very famous and um, it was very frightening for all of us. And uh, 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 we toured this play all over the country. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Falls, Hippo Valley, Marewa, and then finally played it in Harare. But uh, big chefs, political bosses don't travel out of town. So they only found out about it when we played Harare. But by then the cat was well out of the bag and they wanted to ban it and they couldn't ban it. So they said it wasn't allowed to travel out of the country. And... Uh, uh, <laughs> And we, uh, and we were threatened and it became caught up in this. They didn't like during the uh, end of the Gugurundi and the uh, factionalism between Zanu and Zapu, this very powerful cultural event coming out of Matabeleland and Bulawayo. So it, we got caught up in this, in this uh, politics. And uh, were there any threats? You say there was an attempt to ban the, the, the yeah. play, but obviously you know the way they work. Were there any threats or maybe arrest and torture of some of the... We, we, we were not arrested. We were not tortured. Uh, uh, we were threatened in various ways and CIO were crawling all over Amakosi and ourselves. But when you live in the township, you kind of know who everyone is. So... Mm -hmm. You know, you know that that's a CIO guy coming in to see what you're doing or find out about you. Uh, uh, Kant said to me once they did take him aside and said they were going to cut his hands off so he couldn't write any more plays. Uh, 
the the at that time there, there was a huge burst of cultural activity in independent Zimbabwe. There were 130 theater groups in Matabeleland. There were a huge amount of theater groups across the country. And uh, Stephen Chifanisi, Robert McLaren, and Ngugi Wat Thiongo were particularly key to driving that uh, movement. And Kant wouldn't become part of that movement. He, he, as I said, he was a bit stubborn and he was a bit old by anyone. And so uh, I think there was a, there were two things. There was Zanu not liking us be critical of uh, daytime uh, socialists and nighttime capitalists, but there was also a kind of cultural jealousy, I think, because those three guys really led the public attack on Kant and on Amakosi. And uh, uh, Innocent Carla was the big Matabeleland Zanu politician of that time. Yeah. And his fiance, Tandi Nguerbu, was the cultural officer. So Tandi was going into the meetings in Harare and the meetings being organized to object to the play and coming back to Bulawayo, calling us into the office and showing us the memo from Stephen Chifanisi with the 10 points of what he objected to about the play. Uh, she guided us about the political controversy. So there's this, that's why I said it was a real political education. We were being attacked, but sort of protected. The Zapu people, various came, came out and supported us as well, who we didn't know because the, Zapu had not interfered with Amakosi because it was something wonderful and special happening in the township. So they left, they were smart, they left it alone. And uh, if you are going to be arrested by the CIO or being threatened, and um, I was number five on the list of 10 things that they objected to, I'll tell you, you do not go on stage and give a bad performance. Not if you're going to get arrested and beaten up and all, God knows what's going to happen to you. So the play and the performances were extraordinarily strong. Uh, Caiaphas Semenya, let in Bula, came to see us in the township and said they didn't know that there was that quality of theatre happening in Zimbabwe. And it was this poor uh, township in this poor hall. And uh, uh, I, think we, I think Workshop Negative was... Excellent. Later on, it got to tour abroad, it toured to America and the Edinburgh Festival. And um, so we had Tandy uh, sharing information about us, uh, uh, about the plans against us. And uh, much later, after the unity accord between Zanu and Zapu, Kant was scared to go to Highfield. And I said I would go. So I went to the ZANU office in Highfield. Now, as you know, Highfield is the center of ZANU at that yes. time. And I said to them, well, now that there's a unity accord, we want to do workshop negative for you in Highfield. And, but not to school children. We want you to bring the party cells, the adults, to see it. And they went, great. Um, they put on two unity choirs to begin. They packed Guanzura Stadium. And we performed the play to the audience in Guanzura Stadium, full, 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 organized by ZANU PF. So that moment of, of total oppression and fear was also transformed. So I think, I think what was happening was uh, the country was new and I think they were negotiating and maturing in how to deal with uh, cultural uh, criticism and the role of culture uh, to speak out and, and criticize. Uh, we were called to the university where we had Stephen and Robert and Ngugi lead a, a, a meeting uh, with the students about what was wrong with us in the play. And um, it was full, it was in the Grand Great Hall. And we did a play, we had total support from the students. It was like uh, playing a wrestling match. You know, they were cheering lines and all of this. And we came out at the end, and as I said, there were these big fight scenes, so we were dripping with sweat, exhausted. We came out at the end, and the academics were so busy putting desks and chairs on the stage, 
to sit to tell the audience what was wrong with us. They didn't pay any attention to us and there were no chairs for us to sit on. So we sat on the floor of the stage and we were hot and sweating and we passed a big Mazoe bottle like in Pomboti between mm. us. And the audience saw that and just laughed and cheered. So the class politics and the power dynamics were played out before they debated it. And uh, we, we uh, uh, had total support, but then you open the paper the next day and there's the official uh, party line criticizing us. It was very frightening. And what we did, because you do publicity, what we did was as Amakosi, we made sure there was a story on the radio, on television, in the press, wherever, once a month about Amakosi to brand it. But once we got into political trouble, we made sure the stories were about Kant and we raised his profile. Uh, when I say we, I'm talking about Amakosi, Mackay, Togazani, myself, Kant, Andrew Moyer. We raised Kant's uh, uh, profile and that was our mechanism for keeping him safe. Uh, uh, we deliberately made him, uh, 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 branded him and, and raised his profile. And as I say, with time and after the unity accord, there was no, uh, no uh, criticism from ZANU and ZANU supported us uh, when we traveled abroad. We played Godoma and an MP came to Godoma to wish us luck going to uh, Edinburgh. So. It was a very, very exciting time of this huge burst of uh, proletarian working class uh, Zimbabwean culture and theater. And Amakosi was a particularly, and Workshop Negative was a particularly shining moment of excellence. The government got afraid, academics who had done wonderful work probably got jealous. And uh, we got caught up in that, but it educated us, it changed our lives, it made Kant famous. And then the party, ZANU, seemed to come to a position of going, aha, we understand the role of culture and its, its criticism. And there's a traditional role of praise singing and storytelling that is critical. And so it, 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 they matured into that. I think in later years, the oppression became greater. And uh, what's fascinating about Zimbabwe is that theater uh, remained the last really free media in the country as uh, the closing down of media uh, occurred. Kant was always caught up in controversy. He always had a CIO clawing over him and and political pressure on him. Uh, we went to New York just after all the shacks were um, destroyed uh, before that election. We went to, uh, sorry, Los Angeles. And he was being followed and tracked. And what I remember most about him is he was incredibly courageous. He spoke his criticism. He criticized uh, uh, inequality. He criticized things that he saw that were morally wrong with incredible courage. And he didn't mind what his, the opposition was to it. He believed he was speaking the truth. But I think that kind of courage was uh, remarkable. And uh, a bit like obedient uh, uh, karate fighters and uh, uh, Mandabeli warriors, we as the cast would stay silently behind him and nod and then get on stage and give a cracking performance because we had to, had to be good in case somebody arrested us. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine getting arrested for doing a bad play? It's pitiful. So uh, it, it, cre it created its own, own excellence. And uh, I think nowadays people recognize Kant as a great artist and a playwright, but I was there and close to him and saw that journey of uh, becoming politically aware of understanding art and the, uh, the society. And it that experience, those years of doing that play changed Kant's life. It changed McKay's life. It changed my life, totally changed us. And we went on 
to do other things. And at that time, Alton Kamalo had left Barber Fields to go and become a British actor, a, a black Zimbabwean in, in the UK. But nobody in, in the townships believed they could be a, a, a working, earning artist. And Kant made that decision. And I remember him talking about the courage it took. And of course, nowadays, there's a whole bunch of people from Makakoba and Amakosi who are artists of one kind and another. So those, that period of the 80s uh, created a foundation and an inspiration for much of what has followed. And I think a lot of the press uh, commentary on Kant have, has been about the latter part of his career. I think uh, people forget that he was working in a factory at Traeger's and people went, who is this? Who is this person speaking out loud like this? And he spoke out loudly and proudly and uh, to great effect. What a great life. Yes, uh, and it looks like Kant's love-hate relationship was not only with the government, uh, because I remember the ZPC, they showed teacher, they didn't finish it, they said it is tragic, they showed even his soapy Amakorokoza, they couldn't finish it, they said it was tragic, and then I remember also uh, they had Friday live at Amakosi, which also was abruptly ended. Why was that so? Was it also... Uh, some kind of jealous was from certain people who controlled the ZPC, would you say? I, I, no, I, I, I think these things are layered. Uh, as I said, um, th there was a, a, a Marxism and a Stalinist culture which led those academics to attack us, but they themselves had made a huge contribution to this cultural development of Zimbabwe. So uh, there's ideologies, there's personal... Uh, agendas. It all that was the education we had of how complex that terrain is, and you enter into it at your peril. And I think Kant wouldn't take a brief. He was very stubborn uh, and a bit autocratic. I he used to say to me, "You have to steal knowledge." So I would leave useful things, information hanging around, hoping he would steal it. He and I didn't agree over stuff and we did agree over some stuff but i he was quite capable of fighting people and saying i won't do what you're telling me to do i'll do this and if you want to pull the plug pull the plug so he he also was a wonderful creative artist and very 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 funny his plays are very funny but uh, i think he was a bad politician uh, I think a politician is a different kind of animal. So when he tried to revive Zapu 2000, I didn't support him on that, but I was very worried about his safety. And when he created Township Square, I didn't support that. That was funded by NORAD. Uh, I believed he should have a, a theater facility that could tour and play in different provinces and, and move theater around rather than a, a big asset that needed uh, money to uh, retain it. So Kant and I uh, 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 were close, but we would have our, our, our uh, disagreements. And uh, uh, but although he was a bit autocratic, he he shared his thinking with me, and I was very privileged. And of course, it was a huge education for me to understand how he saw the world and the dynamics of Makakoba uh, and how life in, I mean, that uh, somewhere I somehow became something of a Makakoba boy, although you wouldn't believe it's this old white man sitting in front of you now. Uh, and, and then also uh, during this time when these guys were following him around the CIOs and stuff, how did, did he, any, did he at any point to you uh, confide in fear or something? Never. That he was scared Never. or something? Never. He was very, very courageous. He would, he would go, let them shoot me. I'm going to say this. So can you imagine you're a TV company and you say, we want you to change your ending and you're dealing with someone like that. Yeah, you, want to, you can shoot me. I'm going to do what I do. You think the government's going to tell me what to do? You think so? No, I'm doing this. This is what I see. And he believed that he reflect his plays, reflected the views and the consciousness of the township. Certainly he believed that with workshop negative. 
And uh, uh, he would say about himself that he was, he was stubborn. I think he was incredibly courageous. And uh, uh, I, think his, I think it was important to raise his profile because if he was well known enough, people wouldn't do something, they wouldn't arrest him and disappear him, if, it, if I can say that. But uh, he certainly, so that gave him an advantage, but he certainly didn't, um, he took different positions and his politics changed and evolved, but he stood always for what he believed. It was the single most remarkable thing that and his, I think, incredible talent. Yes. And Quant came from a Tebele land, which was tribally marginalized, still tribally marginalized, yet he was this kind of a person who worked with people from all over the country, uh, even in his cast. And I remember he had a play, it was a, com a comedy of some sort, uh, it was titled uh, Sinjalo, where mm -hmm. the two main characters, co-main characters, where the other one was Fortune Rusungunde, the other one, I, 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 I forget the name, but they were Shona and Devele, and they were in a way, he was in a way showcasing the, the need for people to live uh, in a united cross-tribal environment. Is this the kind of person that he was, would you say? I, I think he did believe that people should live and work together. And you must remember that Makakoba is, uh, uh, it's the oldest township of, in Bulawayo, and it's a real mixing pot. Yeah. I mean, you've got to be careful. You people would say, I go to Harare and they'd say, be careful of those shifty Mandebeles down there. And I'd say, who, <laughs> who? In Glovo's actually from Marewa. Uh, mm. Piri is actually from Malawi. Who, who are these Mandebeles? So Makakoba was a, a real mixture of uh, people, some who had rural homes in Matabele land, some who, who had lost those links or were immigrants. Uh, from other parts of the country or other countries. And so the, the character of Marco Koba was very mixed. But make no mistake, Kant was something of a traditionalist. He would talk about the voice of the king. His yeah. rural home was Lupani. And his autocratic behavior was that kind of Nguni authoritarianism, you know, He'll discuss something, but when he says this is what you do, there's no more debate. So he's he 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 uh, and he was very conscious of writing in um, his plays in a mixture of English and Sindabeli, and he could mix it up. We'd play a particular audience, and he'd say, "Do you want it seventy five percent English, fifty fifty percent English, Sindabeli, twenty five percent English?" And the the cast would mix the language so that they could uh, connect well with the audience. Uh, but uh, when I later worked with Ngema and committed artists in that South African theater and Ngema's theater is very based in Zulu culture. I was already well-trained from working with Kant. I knew that kind of um, uh, Ibutu culture, you know, theater is physical work and it's disciplined like a military discipline. And uh, uh, working with Kant had that culture and the karate had that culture. So uh, he, he had a, and he did plays which featured women and talked about gender politics, but there was an underlying uh, cultural ethos that was unmistakably Nguni and I would say unmistakably uh, uh, Mandebele. Yes, uh, Doc, we are left with five minutes. Uh, just before I ask you the last question, I would like to know, will you attend uh, his burial? In I, 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 I'm in Cape Town at the moment and I, I'm unable to. I believe they might be doing a, a memorial service on Friday. I, I would have loved, loved to have go, go, but I believe I won't be able to. Okay, and then uh, as a parting shot, what would you say uh, to Kant's relatives and those that you worked with uh, during your time with him? I'm very, very sorry for their loss. And uh, they're grieving at this moment and I respect it deeply. Uh, Kant was a remarkable person and is a 
huge loss. I have spoken to his daughter earlier on today, but I am very, very, I think there are many people who are very, very sad at this moment. Yes, thank you very much, Doc. Uh, viewers, that was Dr. Christopher John, uh, a man, as you have heard, who worked so much with Quantum Slana, and uh, we are very uh, honored to have you here, Doc. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.